Hey friends, Ash here with Chin Sense. Hope you're doing really well. Today we're gonna to be talking about 10 of the most popular men's fragrance releases of the past decade. So we're talking 2010 through 2019. The way I did this is I got the most popular release based off of the community, the fragrance community, for each year. So for 2010 and then 2011, 2012, and so on and so forth. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about some of the most popular men's fragrances that you can find. Now, one thing I want to make pretty clear right away is that this is the most popular fragrance list for each year of the past decade based off of the fragrance community, not based off of sales, not based off the general public. Those are two different things a lot of times. So I'll probably do a follow up video here very soon where I talk about some of the best selling fragrances of the past decade, one for each year, and that's probably going to give you a better idea of what the, the general public is wearing. But guys in the community, this is what they like to talk about. And these are some huge fragrances too. Obviously, we're kicking things off with 2010, the number one most popular release of 2010. And, and this makes sense. Creed Aventus. Now, there were some heavy hitters in 2010, but this is the one that gets talked about the most even up until today. And not much of a surprise, I guess, this is the only niche fragrance on the list. Everything else is a designer release. Pineapple, birch, musk, whatever, you know the notes, you know the fragrance. This thing has been copied 10 million times. There are so many knockoffs of this, both niche houses, clone houses, designer houses, it doesn't matter. Everybody wants a piece of the Aventus pie. That's what happens when you're successful. When you have something that makes a lot of money, everybody else starts knocking on the door and they're like, hey man, heard you won the lottery. Can I have some? I'm your long lost third cousin twice removed or something. This one's super versatile. You can use it any time of year. Doesn't matter. Daytime, nighttime, date, club, office, whatever. It's Aventus. Now, over the years, the price of this has gone up, 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 both at discounters and retail. Creed keeps jacking the price of Creed Aventus up, and that's because people are paying for the, the jacked up prices. So they just say to themselves, you know what? We could probably charge more and people are still gonna buy it. You wanna do that? Yeah, let's do that. I could use another yacht. <laughs> Thanks, Aventus. But 2010, number one fragrance, Creed Aventus. 2011, maybe a little bit of a surprise. The number one fragrance, Dior Homme Intense 2011. I say that because Dior Homme Intense was not originally released in 2011, but it was uh, re-released in, in a sense in 2011. So Dior Homme Intense originally came out in 2007, if memory serves. This one has Iris, Ambrette, Cedar, and Lavender, along with a bit of vetiver, and I love, I love the way Dior Homme Intense smells. This is freaking awesome. This is one of my favorite smells of all time. Oh man, it's rich, it's decadent, it's, it's sweet but not too sweet, it's classy, it's sophisticated, it's warm, it, it's got a bit of a, a slight powdery feel to it in the best of ways. Dior Homme Intense also has amazing performance. This stuff projects, it lasts. Uh, some people out there are gonna say it's too metrosexual for them. Yeah, yeah. For a while, that's how people describe this fragrance. Kind of a, kind of a weird descriptor, isn't it? It's not hyper-masculine because Iris is the main focal point of the scent and it does have a little bit of a, some people would say makeup your lipsticky feel. I know that it gets it gets sad to death with the iris, you know, using that as a descriptor, but whatever. If it works, it works. Now, while I love Dior Intense, I think it's fantastic. I don't think it's gonna make the best sellers, you know, of, of each year of the last decade, but we'll see. 2012 Versace Eros Eau de Toilette. Mint, Tonka, Vanilla, and Apple, some of the notes in this fragrance. This one really well known for being an attention grabber, having great performance, being fantastic for a club night, or really just any kind of night out where you're trying to get attention. It is on the sweet side of things, but it's not so aggressive that you couldn't wear it to the office. You absolutely can, I've done it a bunch. Just dial down the sprays a bit. This one obviously, very successful. Still yet one of the best selling fragrances on the market here nine years later. 
It has two flankers now, Eros Flame and Eros Eau de Parfum. So this one, obviously a big hit both in the community and outside of it. Now, 2013 is a big surprise. I didn't expect this one. And as time goes, these rankings can kind of shift and change because it's based off of uh, fragrance websites, websites like Fragrantica or Parfumo or Base Notes, things like that. So you can go there and see what people are still talking about, what they're voting on, what they're reviewing from each year. So like I said, as time goes, these can fluctuate a little bit. Typically the top 10 is gonna stay the same, you know, the same 10 fragrances, but maybe they'll move a place up or down. Anyway, 2013, most popular release, Bentley for Men Intense. It's got rum, incense, woods, and leather as some of the notes in the fragrance. And this smells like a much more affordable version of Idole de Luban, which looks like this and is just an awesome fragrance. That one is killer. I think it's fantastic. So obviously, if I think that one's fantastic, I think this one is fantastic also. This is one of the best bang for your buck fragrances on the market. Again, performance is great quality, fantastic. The only qualm that some people might have with this is that it is slightly on the more challenging side of things as far as designer fragrances go, if we're comparing it to the most popular designer fragrances out there, which typically are going to be things that are blue in nature. You know, they're very easy to wear, very versatile type scents. That one is unapologetically in your face. 2013 Bentley from an Intense, that is awesome. Not gonna argue with that. 2014 Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. This one has grapefruit, incense, ginger, and woods. And this is the most popular fragrance in the Bleu de Chanel line, both <laughs> on the fragrance community, on the forums and all that stuff, and in terms of sales. So this one takes that Bleu de Chanel DNA from the Eau de Toilette, gives it a little extra depth, a little extra richness, and apparently that makes it all the better for most people out there. Bleu de Chanel, more specifically the EDT, the first one, really helped kick off this blue wave of fragrances that we've been riding for quite a while now. I wouldn't say it was the, the first blue fragrance necessarily, but was it the one that absolutely kicked everything into high drive where every single fragrance house said, we gotta have something that competes with that? Yeah, yeah, it did. And Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum for most people seems to be the evolution of the fragrance that they like the most. 2015, Aqua de Jo Profumo. C notes, incense, bergamot, rosemary. Some of the notes in this fragrance, this one took the Aqua de Jo DNA modernized it, made it a little bit darker with that incense, which is not really a surprise, the friggin' bottle is black. Classed it up a little bit with that incense, a lot of people would say, made it fantastic for date nights, big compliment puller. People love Aqua de Joe in general, so when you take it, put a modern spin on it and make it more accessible to more people in today's day and age, yeah, it's gonna be a hit. And Aqua de Joe just keeps going, man. Profundo, Profundo lights, absolute, absolute instinct. Just so many fragrances coming out in the Aqua de Joe line. This one though, still is the biggest hitter nowadays, along with the original, the classic. I prefer Profundo a little bit to Profumo. Uh, it just works a little bit better for me. I like the, the path that they took with that one. The little green freshness that they put in there works really well. But Profumo, for the vast majority of you out there, seems to be the one to go with. 2016, Prada Loam. Yeah, finally a Prada on here. Wow, that's clean and fresh. Iris, Neroli, Amber, Cedar, and Violet. Some of the notes in this bad boy right here. And when this very first came out, when it very, very first dropped, a lot of people were not liking it all that much, actually. It was getting compared to Prada Amber Pour Homme and Prada Infusion Dome, which were fragrances that had a, a soapy feel to them as this one came out, or actually they were released before it, obviously, but they were getting compared to this one when this came out. And not favorably, people were saying, hey, those, those old Prada fragrances with that, that soapiness, those are better. Prada Loam is just a, a crappy version of those. It's a, it's a hollow shell of what Prada used to be. And that happens a lot with, with fragrances. You know, a brand comes out with something new and I've done it too. I mean, I think we all have. And you look back at what that brand has done in the past and you say, you know what? 
I really liked that stuff in the past. So this new stuff, I don't like it. Kind of clouds your judgment, messes your brain up a little bit when you're thinking about the older stuff. And if there's a similarity between them, God forbid, because then you're automatically gonna compare the two. And if you already have a strong attachment to the old stuff, it's gonna be really hard for the new stuff to compete in your own mind. So when Prada Loam came out, got dunked on, people were hating on it. People were saying, just wear any of the old infusion fragrances, wear uh, Amber Pour Homme, you know, wear that stuff. Don't even mess with Prada Loam. But then as time went on and more people got their hands on this and more people smelled it, more people wore it, they thought to themselves, this is uh, it's actually pretty good. I kind of like this. Yeah, bottle looks nice, classy, fits in the hand pretty well, looks expensive. I think I'm gonna buy it. So that's what happened. More people bought it, more people wore it. And over time, the popularity of the fragrance went up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Now it's one of the most popular releases of the past decade. Go figure. 2017, Dolce & Gabbana Live Blue, Oh Intense. Grapefruit, sea notes, musk, and juniper. Some of the notes in this fragrance. And uh, this one is, is like the little engine that could. It came out and it was accepted pretty well. People thought, this is nice. It's not bad, not bad. But then as time went, people liked it more and more and more and more. And now it's considered by a lot of people as the best light blue fragrance ever. It's salty, it's fresh, very clean, very brisk, uplifting. It is a great summertime scent, absolutely hands down. Now for me, I do prefer a light blue forever, which is the, the newest release in the light blue line. But this one is right up there with the very best in the line. So Light Blue Intense, killing it for 2017. Moving on to 2018, why Eau de Parfum from Yves Saint Laurent. Now, one thing that you may have noticed at this point is that actually there aren't that many blue fragrances in this list. Now you could say maybe Aqua du Joe, that that's a blue fragrance and I wouldn't argue that or light blue o intense. You could argue that that's a blue fragrance. Sure, sure, sure. But really, if we're talking about the heavy, heavy hitters in the, the blue fragrance genre, you know, the Sauvages, the Blue de Chanel's, the Wise, the Dylan Blues, things like that. We have one Blue de Chanel, no Sauvages. That was a surprise for me too. I was expecting Sauvage, Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum for those to crop up potentially. They didn't, but why Eau de Parfum did. And this is without a doubt, the most popular fragrance in the Y line and for a good reason. Again, versatility off the chart, compliment factor off the chart. Apple, ginger, amber, wood, and sage, some of the notes in this scent. So instead of having that big citrus blast off the top, which a lot of blue fragrances utilize, this one switches things up and goes with a sweet apple. Though it does still have that ginger in there. Yeah, you gotta have the ginger, it seems like, with any kind of blue fragrance. Ginger plus a fruit, because then in the opening, it's gonna smell so appealing that everybody who's just a normal person, they're gonna smell it and go, Holy crap, what is that? I love it. I don't know what it is, but I know I love it. That's what ends up happening. This one is an insane attention grabber, positive attention, not negative, thankfully. And it works in basically any situation you could imagine. Just like uh, Blue de Chanel, Eau de Parfum, why Eau de Parfum, you can use it anywhere. We are at 2019, last year for this list, and it's fitting, it is very fitting that 2019 was Mont Blanc Explorer. And why is Explorer fitting for 2019? Well, we started the decade off with Creed Aventus. We end the decade with Mont Blanc Explorer. In case you're unaware for any reason, Explorer smells suspiciously similar to Aventus. So we began the decade with Aventus and we end the decade with a cheaper version of Aventus. This one's got bergamot, ambroxan, akigala wood, and pink pepper, some of the notes in the fragrance. As I said, this is very similar to Creed's Aventus, only done with a designer twist. So it's not gonna be as smoky. It's not going to be as rich. It's going to have much more of a, a modern, woodsy kind of scent profile as it dries down. It is enormously safe. 
you can use this anywhere. And like a bunch of fragrances here, huge compliment puller. It really shows to have a fragrance that's very popular. The most important things seem to be compliment factor and the performance. Versatility doesn't hurt. Explorer is a fragrance that had to grow on me a little bit over time, and it was kind of similar to what I was talking about with the new releases versus the old releases with Prada Loam. When this came out, the similarity to Creed's Aventus is apparent right away. And so part of me wanted to write it off as being just derivative and boring because it was obviously inspired by another very popular fragrance. But then over time, as I wore Explorer more, I grew to appreciate it for what it is, which is just an enormously versatile fragrance that basically everyone loves that at discounters cost next to nothing. So there we go, 2019 Mont Blanc Explorer. Those are, as of this video, the most popular fragrances of the past decade, one per year. Who knows, two years from now, some of these fragrances may move down a little bit, some other fragrances may move up a little bit, but this gives you a good idea of what people are still talking about from each year. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. As always, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.